Okay. Hey, I'm Tim Black. You tune in to Tim's Tech Live. Um, I have a little problem. Maybe you guys can help me out. I'm trying to understand how this guy who went to New York and shot these two cops, I'm trying to see how is he related to any protesting? Or why is it that the right wing is trying to somehow say that the protesters against police brutality is somehow responsible for this nut case? I'm, I'm open to your comments on that because to me, if a person is insane or on medication, that's nobody's fault, but maybe they're doctors, maybe, you know, or maybe they just lost it. I don't know, but from what I can see and read, this guy who shot these two officers, he was pretty crazy. He shoots his girlfriend. He jumps on social media and talks about it. Then he takes a bus and tell social media, I'm going to take a bus to, I'm going to kill some cops. And then he comes to New York and kills some cops. And just because he uses the hashtag Eric Garner or the hashtag Mike Brown, that doesn't mean he has any connection to the protest. I mean, what does somebody in L.A. doing a sit-in or a die-in have to do with some nutcase in Baltimore who decides he wants to shoot everybody or shoot cops? Nothing. So I think it's, I think it's wrong. And I think it's a false equivalency to try to somehow tie the police brutality, anti-police brutality um, movement to this guy and try to make them responsible for this guy's actions. I think it's hypocritical. And I did a story five, six months ago where a white couple, I forget where it was exactly, they ambushed a couple cops in a diner. Then they ran across the street in the Walmart and held up for a while. And when they got tired of holding up, I think they shot themselves. I mean, this has nothing to do with protesters in Ferguson. This was before Mike Brown, before Eric Garner. This is just what people do sometimes. They flip out and they, they shoot cops. Or they, they flip out and they shoot other people. I mean, regular people get shot a lot. But it's like when officers get shot, we kind of like lose our minds. And now we're going to make this whole big thing that now we, ha we can't protest anymore because of this? No, look, just because I make a video saying that I want the, the officer who jumped out of his cruiser and shot Tamir Rice that day, just because I say I want him locked up, that doesn't mean you can say that I'm now against all cops and I'm responsible for the actions of a deranged asshole, okay? And just because I think that officer Pantaleo, who wouldn't let go of Eric Garner's throat, just because I say that guy should be locked up for what he did, does that mean you can saddle me with some type of responsibility for some heinous actions somebody does whom I don't even know? You can't keep blaming. You know what? You know what? Here, and I'm going to say this. I'm not a big Al Sharpton fan, but it's not his fault if he holds a rally and some guy runs out and does something. I mean, Bill O'Reilly gets on the TV and says a lot of shit he shouldn't say. He uses a lot of rhetoric, and just because we got a couple of, I don't know, cornball-type brothers who agree with him doesn't mean I agree with him. I certainly do not. And he could have just as much have been cited this super crazy dude as Al Sharpton. I mean, he could have got mad. He could have sat here and watched um, Giuliani get on TV and talk down and badly about African Americans and about black communities. And say, I'm going to go to New York and shoot me a cop because of Giuliani. I mean, isn't that plausible? It's just as plausible as what you're trying to say about Sharpton, right? Well, look, the sword cuts both ways. So let's just back down on the rhetoric and stop pointing fingers. What we had was an individual who was off his medication. It happens a lot. It happens all the time, actually. It's a big world. And one thing before I get out of here. You know, people with conspiracy theorists, theories, you know, I'm not going to knock you. Hey, you believe stuff, certain stuff, you think you're smarter than everybody. Let me tell you, man, the world is huge. And there are a lot of people in it. And if you just look at the United States, the United States is huge. And there are a lot of people in it. No one actually has to put actors in places to make them do things in order for there to be a story to report on. There is so much news so many stories happening every day that you can spring or spin any narrative you want. 
just by choosing certain stories to report on. There's a dog murder somewhere. There's a rape somewhere. There's a beheading somewhere. There's, there's always crime. And at any given minute, there'll be a story that if you want to talk about it and blow it up and use statistics, you can make that story seem like a trend. Now, I don't expect you to know that because maybe you don't look at all the news, but I consume a lot of news and I'm just here to tell you, it doesn't have to be a theory or a false flag or a big time intervention going on, a cast of characters doing this thing behind the scenes. If you want to make a narrative, if you want to put forth an agenda, all you got to do is wait, man. Wait and watch for something to happen. Because with as many people we have in this country, Eventually it will. And that ain't the theory, that's the truth. Fact.